Hi everyone, Merry Christmas. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Rich Reviews. We're going to be releasing this video on the last day of the year. So what better day to do a 2021 year in review video. So first of all, Hope you're all having a great Christmas, a great Christmas break. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody and a happy coming um, new year. Um, we're pushing this out as I detailed um, on the last day of the year. So we're gonna do a 2021 review. So it's been an eventful year. Obviously we've had the situations with the viral, virus again, pending, causing or looming on us um, ever since it has been really since 2020. Uh, so we've had sort of more, of more similar again in 2021, but it's eased off a hell of a lot. So it's enabled us to do quite a few events and to be able to get quite a bit done actually. And it's been the year or the first year of only in the 458 that we really hoped it would be. First of all, uh, getting the car out of storage um, around the March time to start creating content. Now that's not when you would have seen the first video the first first drive i believe we dropped in around may time um, but we started creating content a bit earlier than that so we got the car out of the garage and started creating content the first big event started to occur when i say big events a big events for the channel and big events for us in the household not necessarily big events for you um, so from that respect one of the big things as you know as i detailed in a few videos was we had to get the garage renovated so um, but to do that obviously we had to have the car at the garage we couldn't have that renovative work performed while the car was in the garage so we coincided the car being detailed and fully ppf'd um, hence being away at Reap Midlands um, and getting the garage work done at the same time. So literally the day after the car left for Reap Midlands, the garage renov renovative work um, was, was started and it just, it just took a day to do. Um, so in effect, as you know, I won't harp on about it. You can look at the video, um, a garage door for my Ferrari, um, if you want to look at all the details but in effect we cut the opening down of the front of the garage to gain better access for the car to give it full eight eight, eight foot width um, clearance um, and also we opened up the in interior pillars of the garage as well so that the doors could open properly and it would give proper movement in the garage that has made a massive difference now what's also made a massive difference is the garage door sealing better especially for the winter period and it's substantially dropped the rh levels in the garage still not quite as low as i want them to be but that'll take a quick more um that would take a bit more sealing effort with the garage but it's massively dropped the um the rh levels so the car went up to reap midlands and it had a full paint correction and it had full ppf wrapping on it so that was that was um, a big change to this car because it was something that um, I'd done on the 993 and I was really keen to get that protection on the, on the 458 before we actually started doing a lot of mileage on the car. So literally a week after we collected the car, we then had the first major event of the year. Um, and it was the Ferrari Owners Day um, at Sewell Aerodrome. That was a fantastic event. It was our first major event with the car. And it was a big one as well. Um, there was a massive amount of um, turnout there, as you'd expect for Ferrari Owners Day. We took the car, the car was on show there. I think it was entered for the Concours, but you know, <laughs> the standard of cars, I think an F F40 won it in the end, um, which, it, which, which was pretty much expected to win. It was in a pristine condition. Um, so we didn't expect to win anything with the car, um, but it was great to take it there, to have it on a um, really good show area, which gave us great parking in effect, great prime, uh, prime parking. And the whole day was fantastic. It was a hellishly hot day as well so pretty much from the early get-go we had some really really screaming hot days there um, so it's a beautiful hot day in May so we had the so we had the Ferrari owners day and it was great as well because I met up with uh, one of my old friends that I met years ago when I went to Brooklyn's or Brooklyn's at Auto Italia day and I hadn't seen him for years um, you know who you are <laughs> so <laughs> He says he doesn't watch my content, but he seems to be able to quote every aspect of the channel. So I, I have my doubts, <laughs> um, but uh, he's, he's a good friend of mine. We have a lot of banter, but he's a good friend. And so it was really good to meet up with him as well there. And uh, also met up with the guy who owns my 993 now as well. So it was really good to meet with him too. Um, and uh, he brought his uh, 458 Speciale. So we had a look around the 458 Speciale there as well. So that was pretty cool. Um, so following on for, from the Ferrari owner's day, we then had the drive through the Cotswold with 15 other Ferraris um, to Dormy House, which was a special invite from Dick Lovitz. 
that was a really cool event. Um, again, pretty pretty much an, a, a good day as well. I mean, in the, in England, you, you're always going to get potential with rain, and unfortunately, it did rain as well, and that, that highlighted an issue with the uh, with the roof, which I'll probably talk about a little bit later as well. Um, it wasn't an issue with the roof, but part of the design flaws with the, with the roof, um, and. It was pretty cool to drive through the villages. People were coming out um, to look at the cars. We were, we were taking photographs of the cars um, and uh, taking video shots, etc. Um, we only had one disgruntled uh, person in the village and, and that person uh, tapped on one of the guy's windows and asked him if he could quieten it down a bit with his car, but uh, that, that was the only person. So a bit of a Karen there, um, but uh, that was the only person who, who, who wasn't too keen on, the, on what was going on. But uh, everybody else was delighted, really happy. And it was, it was a really cool event. Great meal as well. Um, and great to, to, to meet the other, the other guys there as well that are associated with Dick Lovett's. So following on from the Dormy House meetup, we had the launch of the 296. Now the 296 is the hybrid V6, which is um, supposed to be a standalone car and supposed to be the, the progression on from the SF90, which is also um, a, a hybrid, but it's, it's really it's the progression on from the F8. It's how Ferrari are going in the future. They're clearly going with, with hybrid technology, um, whether or not they'll move into a full electric car in the future, who knows? This is their way of progressing across to that sort of technology and to try and appease their customer base, of course. I mean, they've got no choice, they've got to do this, just like the particulate filters, you know, they've got no choice, they've got to reduce emissions, so they've, they've got to do this, whatever effect and impact it has. They're trying to mitigate that as much as possible, but it is what it is. So we went to the, to the first 296 launch, and I said a first, more on that in a minute. Um, and that was really cool, again, invited by Dick Lovitz, um, and we're at Dick Lovitz Swindon to see the, the, the reveal of the 296. I must admit that the first sound of the 296 um, was pretty cool, it, it does sound good. Yeah, it was in an echoing showroom, so you can't get a full appreciation of it. You really need to um, sort of get out and drive it and, and see what it's like in reality. So I intimated there that there was two, two 296 launches. Well, I was. The first event was around the July time, and the second one actually occurred a lot later in the year in November. And this was a, a cocktails event. That was pretty cool as well to be invited to that. Um, they had dancers there, so it's very different. Dick love it and wanted to spice it up to do something a bit different, and they certainly managed that. So then we come to the month of August. Now in the month of August, we had a very busy month. Um, first of all, we had the Broadway car show. Now we'd never heard of the Broadway car show. In fact, I never knew there was a Broadway in the UK. Um, and it's a, it's a village in effect that's in the Cotswold. It's not too far away from Clarkson's Farm, not too far away from Cafe and the Machine in that area. Um, so we were there, uh, we went to that car show, um, we had a, an early morning drive down into the event which was uh, managed by the, by the organisers, so we met at uh, the train station nearby um, which is actually one of the old style train stations, so they've got steam engines there that are, that are driven through that, um, through that station and they've got a beautiful little cafeteria there as well, so we were there at that cafeteria to meet up with, uh, with the other people that are going for the drive into Broadway. Uh, and then we, we had the spirited drive into Broadway, which again was, was pretty cool. Then we had uh, Pride of Place parking in the, on the green area in Broadway. And Broadway is a beautiful little village. It's a, it's a, it's a very quaint um, Cotswolds village. And we found out afterwards that they're very well known for this Broadway car event, but you know, we'd never heard of it before. We're definitely going again next year. Or, um, and uh, you know, we were very surprised that we hadn't heard about it before, but we definitely will be going again next year. And uh, we met up um, with, um, with a, a friend there as well, who's, who's um, hopefully going to be a friend for life now, a really nice guy. Um, and uh, we got to know him and uh, got to know his yellow testrosa. So I won't, name, I won't name and shame him because he may not want to be named on video, but um, he'll, uh, he'll know who he is. And uh, thanks a lot for, for your friendship and for helping us out because he helped us out with the channel as well subsequently. I'd already had some communications with, with James Martin from JM on Cars. And uh, I'd had some communications with him about possibly doing something at some point um, the previous year. And uh, it, it's uh, because uh, this person knew, knew James um, and James was going to do some content on this car. So we actually ended up, I, I contacted James and just uh, re restarted the conversation really. 
And James said, yeah, come up and, and give us a hand. So we actually went up and, and uh, for a whole, spent a whole day um, helping James um, create content for uh, the Challenge Stradale and the Testrosa. So the, so the grey and the Grigio, uh, Silverstone Grigio, I think it's Silverstone Grigio and Challenge Stradale and the, the yellow Testrosa. And you'll see that those videos have just recently dropped. Because we'd helped James and uh, James is just a really kind guy and just, he let us borrow his, his Scuderia, his 430 Scuderia. <laughs> So we had this 430 Scuderia for a few hours. So as, as you've seen, we've just dropped the, the video for the review on his Scuderia. We didn't want to drop it earlier because um, we didn't want to impinge on his content because um, you know, in there we talk about helping out with the Challenge Stradale and the Testrosa. And of course that would have been unfair to drop our video before James's videos had dropped because then we could be, give, be giving the game away in effect. So we waited a long time. That content was created way in, in the summer, way earlier in the summer in August. Um, but we dropped our video just last Friday. Um, but that was, that was fantastic to, to, to have that car for a few hours. Um, and again, really changed my view on the Scuderia. Um, you know, really impressed with the Scuderia, great car. And uh, fantastic again of James to lend it to us. And now we come to the main event of the year, Salon Privé. Bizarrely, we'd never been to Salon Privé before. Um, this event takes place at the beginning of September. And um, again, we were very fortunate. Dick Lovitz looked after us again and they got us some hospitality tickets for the first day of Salon Privé. That was absolutely fantastic. The, the hospitality was brilliant, food, champagne, everything all laid on for us. Um, we had to get ourselves togged up. So Jacob and I got ourselves togged up in, in some sports jackets, etc. And that was an event in itself, trying to get the, the, quite, the, the correct clobber. Um, I think, and, you know, I, I know I got my uh, a new jacket from Bath and Jacob got some bits and pieces as well. So that was pretty cool doing that and a father and son thing to do as well. Because we've been very fortunate to be there on day one um, and uh, Jacob, who creates all the video content, does all the videography and editing for the channel, um, he got the video out pretty quick, worked really hard and edited the video, got the content out. So we were able to drop the video the next day um, so that we actually beat all the other YouTubers, really. And uh, that, was a, that was one of the uh, first videos that started moving us forward. There's been a few other videos in the year as well. Um, pretty much after then, we've, it's really helped us to move the channel forward. Um, but that was sort of one of the first marker videos. And it was a great day to see the cars there and to see how it's, it's, um, it's put together. And it's a very small event, very localized, very compressed, um, but not overly compressed, you know? These, these events that you can go to where you're just walking for ages and you never really get to see everything. Well, here, you know, you could walk around it, um, which was the actual parades lap that they did for the cars that were, that were, um, that were, that were auctioned. Um, it, was, it was pretty cool. You could just walk around and see everything that was there, get your food in the middle tents. Uh, you had this display area in the center section between the actual marquees. Um, we had the, the key cars that they were displaying there. Um, you know, they, for example, they had an F1 there, the Zonda, and also they had, of course, a 250 there. In fact, they had 250s there on the day. Both of those 250s were worth around, well, millions each. Um, who knows? I mean, it, it changes on a daily basis, these cars. Um, if you're going to buy a car like that, then um, you pay the price that they're worth on the day because they're just on, a, on an hourly basis even, these cars are going up in value. But that was a, that was a phenomenal event. Um, so we went there on day one, really enjoyed the event. And then we were back there again on the following Saturday. Um, and that was for the Cup Trophy Day. Now, what the Cup Trophy Day means is that that's when all the major marks um, have all their day when they come together. So Lamborghini, Ferrari, um, all the major brands um, that are invited there, they get to park in a particular area where all their cars are parked together. Um, and they're allowed and they, they have tickets through their, through their particular brand. So we had tickets with Ferrari Owners Club um, where you can actually then park with all the other cars um, and then go into the event and enjoy the event. Um, now, day one was very quiet and that was really cool as well. It made it a lot easier for us to create content. On a Saturday, it was a lot busier, but it wasn't that busy. It was still fairly quiet because it's still not open to the general public. This is still open just for the major brands. So, Lamb as I say, Lamborghini, Ferrari, etc and Ferrari get pride of place parking. So where you've got Blenheim Palace, the main event is in front of Blenheim Palace. So where you've got Blenheim Palace, literally we were parked right behind Blenheim Palace in the key parking area, in the priority parking area. We were parked there with all the other Ferraris. And again, we met up um, with the, the guy who's got uh, my 993. 
um, and who's got the S458 Speciale, and we had a really good look around his Speciale there. That was, that was really cool as well. And we met up with um, some other good friends as well, another colleague um, who you've, you will have seen on the channel, who's got the other 458 as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it was another great day, and we created some more content, as you will have seen, for our Salon Privé. Please check out the videos below for the Salon Privé content, if you haven't seen them already, especially day one. They're a really cool event, um, and it's, you know, we think we, yeah, it was some of our best content we've put together. Um, but we'd like to think that each video gets better and better. So now we've come along and we've come to the stage of October. So we're coming towards the latter part of the year. Now two key events happened in October. We did um, a Broadway breakfast meet um, with the Ferrari Owners Club with the Cotswold region. Uh, we're going to do a lot more events with the Cotswold region. Um, so that was pretty cool that we've aligned with them. And again, at Broadway again. So we've never heard of Broadway before and we've got, we're doing two events there. We spent three days there because the, the first Broadway car show was there um, on two days. So we actually um, were there with the Ferrari Owners Club for a breakfast meet as well. And that was a glorious sunny day as well. Um, so that was really cool. We were there with our, our colleague again, with our other friend who's got his 458. So that was his first major event with his 458. So that was pretty cool to, um, to do that together. And then also, um, we can now reveal, we actually were at Top Gear as well, doing, helping out with a Christmas special. So if you've, you've just recently seen the Christmas special, the Top Gear Christmas light special, well, we were there. We, we, we were one of those cars with the Christmas lights all over the 458. And we are going to put a video, video out actually creating, because we created content uh, during the whole day. Um, so we are going to push a video out. We've got to get confirmation that it's okay from the BBC to do that, first of all. They obviously saw us filming and we were speaking to them when we were there, when we were filming. Um, so they know we were creating content, but we just want to do a confirmation to make sure that they're now happy that we, that we drop our video on the event. Um, and we'll be dropping that video for you as well. Um, all things considered, hopefully that will be coming to you early in the new year. Uh, we were at Duns Dunsfold Aerodrome um, with all the other supercars, so that was pretty cool. Um, it, was a, it was a very cold day. It was great fun when we got going, and not all that was because the, the chap we were there with, he wore a, a bizarre costume and gesticulating, interestingly, to the cameras with his costume. <laughs> and he, he made the day for us. It was, it was great because we were there for five hours waiting in the, in the rain and the cold um, because they, they were delayed and they didn't bring us forward to that area to do any filming. And we, we weren't involved in as much filming as they hoped we would be. Um, but it made, made the day really with his humour, so that was pretty cool. As you can see, we've had quite a patch year because we've had pretty much something going on every month. So in November, um, we had the one and only um, Cylinder Club event for Dick Lovitz. Now, usually they'd have three or four of these um, running throughout the year, but again, because of COVID, restrictions, because limitations of what they're allowed to do with a grouping of people, um, they were only able to fit in one Cylinder Club event. And it was a beautiful sunny day, so um, it was really cool to be able to go to that Cylinder Club again. Again, thank you, Dick Lovett, for all your invites throughout the year for Salon Privé, um, for the Cylinder Club and for the 296 launch. We really do appreciate it. Um, it's very kind of you. Thanks very much. Um, and again, we were, it was the first time we were able to take the, the 458 there to one of the cylinder clubs and park it on the right hand side within the Ferrari group, as opposed to all the other cylinder club events that we've been there with the 993. Of course, we parked it with the Porsche, Porsche grouping on the left hand side. So that was that was really cool and, and a, you know, a big change in our and a big change for us to be able to park the car in that area, you know, to have a Ferrari for the first year is, is, is very, very cool and very important to us, you know. It's a big lifestyle change on a Ferrari. So that was really cool, um, having that event, having the, um, having the Cylinder Club, the one and only Cylinder Club, um, that went forward. So also in November, I had a call from my authorised dealer who always looks after me um, with regards to watches. Uh, it wasn't really a call, it was an email. Um, and uh, to say that my um, Rolex um, James Cameron Cedarella Deep Sea um, with the James Cameron dial, in, in effect, is a graduated dial from blue to black. Uh, if you want to see more about that, that, um, about that watch, then please check out my watch content playlist below. Um, so I had a call to say that that watch had come in. So that was pretty cool. Um, because we had problems with the, with the Abarth, we had problems with the engine on the Abarth, more on that a bit in a later video. We went down in the Ferrari and I said to him, look, I'm really worried because where he has his establishment is a very old style jewelers, beautiful jewelers. It's been in his family since the 1800s. Um, and you know, I knew his father and, 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 uh, and I knew um, uh, him as well for a long time. So I've had a like 15 odd year relationship nearly with, with this jewelers. So, um, uh, really lovely jewelers. And uh, I said to him, you know, we've got nowhere to park. I'm a bit worried about taking a Ferrari down there because um, his, his shop is right in the main um, complex, in the main promenade complex. 
And uh, he said, no worries, um, just bring it out, park it right in front of the shop. We'll close the shop down because it's towards the end of the day anyway. And we'll get our security guard to watch your car for you. Now, I really kick myself. We didn't get any flipping photographs or any video content. We were so caught up in enjoying the moment, which is cool. Sometimes you've got to just enjoy the moment, but we didn't create any content, which now I look back on it, I really wish we'd had at least taken some photographs, but we didn't, it is what it is. So we had the car parked right outside. It was a lovely sunny day, summer, it was a lovely, lovely summer's day, Park, car parked outside, roof down, and, um, and, we, um, and we had the car parked, like I say, right outside the jewelers, and, the, and uh, he shut the, down the jewelers, and his, um, his security guard came out and literally stood there like this by the side of the Ferrari, uh, guarding the Ferrari while, while we were in there purchasing the watch. Um, and then we, we drove on a bit further um, to celebrate the actual procurement of the watch, as, we, as Jacob and I always do with, an, with a, either a glass of champagne or a, you know, a meal or both, which is what we did. We had a nice meal there um, in, the, in the town. And lo and behold, Chris Harris went and parked behind us in his, in his 512 TR. So we got to meet Chris Harris and have a bit of a chat with him and get the photo, some photographs taken with the two cars. And uh, you'll, you'll see as we, as we show here, you know, we've shown in the, in the previous video that we created on it. And um, when we at least took, managed to take some photographs of that, unfortunately, we didn't get some photographs or video content of the earlier stages, but you know, it is what it is. So collecting the James Cameron pretty much closed out the year for us with, for the events. We've obviously created um, quite a few con bits of content throughout the year to cover those events. One of the best videos that we've released through the, throughout the year. Each video seems to gain more momentum, which of course is great because it means we're moving along in the right way. Um, one of the best videos for us was the 458 Buyer's Guide that we released a couple of weeks back. So um, that's, that's done very well for us. And each video we drop is progressively doing better. So um, thank you to everybody who's, who's following us and, and supporting the channel is very much appreciated. We do thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I um, hope everything's going really well with you, especially with this virus situation still around. If you're not subscribed, then please think about subscribing. It really does help us to move forward. Some great future content to come. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel. And we'll see you in the new year.